Hola from Timor Leste. Today is our first day in this brand new country and today morning we have actually roamed around the city looking for a hotel something which is close to the city center and finally uh, after a lot of circus we finally extended our stay here itself yeah. at our homestay so now, this is where we are staying this is called NR homestay yeah. but it's about 5 kilometers away from the city center which but is the, why uh, we have <laughs> this scooter it's a Honda Scoopy and these clumsy helmets <laughs> And it's evening now, about 4.30 and we are going to go to the city center and walk around there. This area is called Delta 3 for Manto, and it's about 4 kilometers away from the city center. So our host has been kind enough and she has let us borrow her scooter. Otherwise, um, renting a scooter here would cost anywhere between 20 to 25 dollars per day. But now it's free for us because we are staying with them for a few days. So many goats around here. There is a micro lake coming behind us. This is the common mode of transport which the locals use here. We heard that it's about 20 or 25 cents for any ride and any distance. And they have these numbers, root numbers written on them. So each root number goes to a specific location. Let's see if we can hop on one in the coming days. Oh look, so many microliths are here. I think this is one of the stops. It's about 4.30 in the evening and I think the sunset should be around 6.45 or 7 o'clock. So our plan is to explore the town till the sunset. Uh, we spot another microlith, number 11. Oh, this must be the Timor Plaza, the only mall in the entire country. Maybe we'll go visit it in the coming days. You can see a lot of taxis standing in front of the mall. This is Telemore where we got our SIM card this morning. So I just picked up a SIM card now. There are three companies that offer SIM cards here. A subsidiary of Telenor and the last one is I think uh, Timor Telecom or something like that. So a lot of people say Telecom Cell is the best. Uh, but the second best is Telemor, especially if you go to the quieter parts of the country, like the smaller towns, then Telemor works a little better. So that's why we picked up this SIM card and for $5 we get one week of data unlimited uh, and the SIM card itself is just $1 to buy. So on SIM card, it's going to be $8 top up. And this is one of the two main roads here in Delhi. And you can see how less the traffic is. Hello. Crocodile. Timor Leste flat. So we are now walking around in Thais Market which is like the old market here in Delhi. It's a very small one but you can see a lot of clothes, a um, lot of souvenirs. Uh, basically these are all Timor Leste themed so we can see the flag and pretty much everything. And we could also see crocodiles. Like not, not the real crocodile but these are small models of it, toys of it. And it's mostly because Timor Leste is known for its a uh, huge number, a huge population of saltwater crocodiles. So all these clothes which we saw were basically like shawls which were made of two or three color threads and all of them have these Timor Leste written on their borders. So it's one of those famous souvenirs which people pick from this country. And from this cloth they've even made wallets, purses, earrings, so many items. The main idea is I think they use the, the four colors which are in the Timor Leste flag itself yeah. which is red, yellow, white and black. While we were walking around we also noticed that a lot of the things are priced in US dollar. Yep. Um, looks like the currency here is in fact the US dollar itself. Uh, we did hear about it but we also heard that they might be introducing some new currency for any value which is less than two dollars or up to two dollars basically they have other currencies which are called as centavos so 100 centavos is equal to one us dollar so it's basically like a cent and that is the only thing that is printed like those coins are made here in timor leste 
whereas the rest of them are just good old US dollars that come from the US treasury. Delhi itself is a very beautiful city so far. Um, it's, it's right on the coastline, so you have beautiful beaches. I think we might go there in some time. Yeah. And also surrounding it are these green big mountains. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, Can't wait to ride on these mountain roads. Wow! Can you see the mountains in the back? Looks so scenic. The mountains this side as well. I think this entire city is surrounded by many mountains. As soon as we came here, we felt like as if we were living in the early 1990s or even early 2000s. Yeah, everything is like so very different. Old. There's there's a retro feel to a lot of things. If you just ignore the cell phones that are every, in everybody's <laughs> hands, it looks and feels like it's from another time. The nature of this country is absolutely stunning. But when you enter the city, we saw a lot of dusty roads and so, everything is dusty. Yeah, it's a... Uh, the infrastructure is not that developed. Yeah, and... It makes sense because it's still a very new country and relatively poor. We did learn that uh, most people here in this country live on one point two nine dollars a day, which is like is hundred like rupees. rupees. It's I very, mean, very low. what what can you really live on with that kind of money, right? It's just scary. See a lot of palm stains. Oh, my helmet fell. Come, let's go to the next spot. can park here. Do I get down? Okay, let's get down and let Tommy park the bike. So right now we are actually at the Delhi Lighthouse, what you see behind us and all of this is the beach right here. It's a rocky beach. On the opposite side we can see an island which is actually the Ataru Island. So if you want to go explore that island, you can take a local boat from here, go there, spend a day there and come back. So our plan isn't to go there because that's mainly for snorkeling and we don't really have that much time here that we want to spend one full day on the island. And, and this country is actually younger than us, it's just 20 years old. So we are really interested to learn about its history. And if that gives you a clue and you want to guess how old we are, comment down below. This country is home to only 1.3 million people and 20 years ago at the time of independence, it was probably less than half that. Yeah. So population boom has been crazy here. But it also means that the country is extremely small. Like even Delhi itself has a very small population and there are two very large cities. That's Delhi is one and Bauka, which we also plan to visit later. As most of you know, the United Nations is predominantly influenced by the Western Bloc, led by the United States of America. And also the US has a much more stronger currency at this point in the world in time. So it only made sense for the government here to rely on that until they're able to establish their own currency. Um, yeah, so everything in the shops is priced in dollars, which seems a little funny, but... It feels kind of similar to Cambodia, yeah. because they're also used to dollars. 
Yeah, so the the downside of having dollar as the currency is that everything is very expensive compared to neighboring Indonesia. So a lot of things are, you know, shared with Indonesia. It looks like the food seems to be the same. Like the menu boards all look the same while we were riding down the street. So I can only imagine that the the main difference is just in the pricing. The taste is probably going to be the same. But we are here to try out some food, so we'll give that a go later. Another thing that we noticed was that there's a lot of Chinese people here. Yeah. Um, so we did ask our homestay uh, host and a few other people, like, what is the demography like? So a significant portion of the people here are definitely uh, Timorese, and Timorese here, they are very similar to Indonesians because people in Timor, the island, shared between Indonesia and East Timor, which is Timor Leste, they're all pretty much the same people. They're all Catholic. It's just that during probably the colonial rules, they were ruled differently. That's why even today they're different countries. But we'll learn more about that at the museum. Yeah, but the the people, I mean, appearance-wise, they look somewhere in between uh, Southeast Asians and probably Aboriginal Australians. Which makes sense because if you go down south from here, you'll reach Australia in about 35-40 minutes by flight. So it's really close. The other thing we learnt is that a lot of Chinese people came during the medieval times, uh, you know, basically in the course of trading. Uh, this was before the Portuguese really settled down. So a lot of people here are still of Chinese descent and they can speak Chinese, that they've kept their culture alive. Uh, because even the shops we could see Chinese symbols and you know a few Chinese uh, markings on the roads as well and a few boards actually have the Chinese language like government boards etc. So and then we also learned from our host that um, since um, since independence a lot of Chinese uh, people have actually been moving in from mainland China to Timor Leste mainly because they are setting up a lot of businesses and we did do some research around it and it looks like a lot of shops here, a lot of businesses are run by new age Chinese families. Um, and even the homestay where we are staying, the other three houses or rooms are actually rented out by Chinese? Families, but we don't really know if they are like new Chinese families or old ones. But uh, yeah, that just gives you an idea of what kind of people live here in Timor Leste, where they come from and what culture they bring to this country. So overall this country, if by the looks of it, we feel that it's very expensive. Like for example, renting a scooter was about 20 or 25 dollars per day. And we did walk around a little bit to see if we can get a better, cheaper hotel. But no, unfortunately the least you can pay for a hotel room is 20 dollars a night. Which is actually a lot because in even in neighboring Indonesia, you know what the prices are like, like in Bali, it's 3 to 4 dollars a night if you want to just get a simple fan room. Here, they don't really have the concept of fan rooms. Because and it's so hot every yeah. day here, everybody uses air conditioning. And therefore, the prices of the rooms are also like a lot higher. So the local language here is called Tatun. It's a mix of Portuguese and a little bit of Indonesian language as well. Tatun is the official language along with Portuguese. Uh, these are the two formal official languages, but for uh, official purposes, uh, they also consider English and Indonesian Bahasa as uh, languages that they can, you know, people can speak in, uh, submit their forms and affidavits in, etc. So essentially, the country runs on four languages. Uh, Tetun shares a lot of its uh, words with uh, Portuguese and Bahasa, which makes. Even Ola and Obrigada. Ola is hello, Obrigada is thank you, which is actually a Portuguese word. For someone who'd come from a Portuguese speaking country, they might find it very easy to. Uh, yeah. you know, speak to people yeah. here. For us, uh, it's not been easy so far. Not a lot of people have been able to speak English. And we, but of course... heard that people in Delhi have uh, know English much better than the other parts of the country. And the other parts of the country, they hardly anybody speaks English there. Yeah, and which makes sense because, you know, when you're in Rome, you must be like the Romans. But we don't know <laughs> Tato nor Portuguese or Bahasa. So we're gonna just attempt to work this out with our translate app. Do we have Tatun on translate? No, I didn't see that. By the way, Tatun is not there on the translate <laughs> app. Maybe you guys should get Tatun on it. You know, get Google to get Tatun on it. Yeah. Another point of concern for us, as especially when you're traveling as a couple, is about the safety. So before we came here, we were a little anxious, a little tense about how the safety situation will be in the country. But, uh, you know, usually when we worry about safety, what we do is we go on to a couple of these uh, 
uh, advisories that are listed out by various embassies and consulates. Uh, the one which we read that really freaked us out was the Canadian one. Oh, the water. The, the Canadian embassy actually has uh, a notification saying, a travel advisory saying, don't go to Timor-Leste, uh, even if it's critical, reconsider your travel, etc. However, our own country's uh, advisory isn't um, that strict at the moment. In fact, we did speak to the Indian consul officer in Bali. Uh, he said he, he had no reservations about us traveling to this place. He said Timor-Leste is a, is a very valuable friend for India in this part of the world. Delhi is not unsafe. So even we even inquired with our friends whom we made on the bus and even at our homestay, all of them suggested that we come back to the room before dark. That is like around 7 o'clock in the evening. So we're gonna stick to that. And that makes sense because even in India, you unless you really know the place, the neighborhood, you wouldn't step out yeah. later in the night. And I think that's the same thing even in the US and, and yeah, many other Western countries as well. So it's probably not fair to call out Timor Leste being unsafe without you know getting into specifics. So we agree with that and we're gonna probably listen to what the locals suggest so we can be respectful of you know what to do. However, one thing that did freak us out was there was a very recent murder in the same neighborhood as where our homestay is and basically that's that's a you know our homestay owner said this is why you don't stay out. Uh, th there's a bunch of uh, different martial art groups that you know are here in Timor Leste and not all of them see eye to eye about things. Um, one of these groups has attacked somebody else and just to prove their superiority or something like that which has less to do with you know the political situation it has more to do with you know a local uh, vandalism you know that sort of thing and also this country is really poor so there will be a lot of robbery and stealing involved so yeah. they told us to keep our cameras and everything very safely which we'll try our best to do we won't take it out unless necessary let's see what else we can you know look at and uh, you know, chill for the rest of the day and tomorrow onwards we'll get out there and explore more of Delhi. Tomorrow's day! The statue behind me is apparently of Sebastio Gomez. He was one of the greatest freedom fighters here and he was actually killed right here uh, while protesting by Indonesian forces. So this is right across the street from the Motel Church. Uh, we plan to visit that later this week and it's uh, a lot of the history apparently resides inside that church as well and uh, it's this monument is the biggest monument dedicated to a freedom fighter here in the country. So this looks like a boulevard and most of the locals here we see are coming for jogging, walking, exercises. There I see kids playing something with a ball, maybe football. And it's a nice peaceful place to spend an evening and watch the sunset. So we see a lot of shops here lined up and I saw a lot of carts having coconuts so I inquired at one of them and it is one dollar for a coconut.
Shishira, do the Timor Leste dance. We just stopped at this place looking at all these colourful chairs and decided to see what it is. The locals are just hanging out here, just waiting to watch the sunset. So cool. I think we'll just grab one of those seats there and wait for the sun to set. Atauro Island. Shish. Now need. And now heading back to the room. And tomorrow is going to be a packed day. I want to go explore a lot more of Delhi. And as you can see, Shishira is already ready to go eat dinner. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye! Telling you, Shisha, once you get one. Yeah. Um, but what did I want to say? So, today is our first day here. Uh, okay, never mind. Okay. The dog won't let I us talk. I don't think it will let us talk. So, let's go out. And then we also learn from our <laughs> water. <laughs> yeah. However, because it's such a. Oh, the water is coming. Backpack stars. Have you done it? Otherwise, she will keep saying that again. <laughs>